Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Keith Thompson. And uh, if you've been a follower of me for a while, you you would know that I'm against. Uh, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm absolutely against Rabbi Zachariah, uh, but I do not follow and I would not recommend him to anyone um, simply based on the fact that he is an Armenianistic free willer. And uh, if you are a true believer and you know the scriptures, you know that that is heresy. It's wrong. And uh, it causes the person who believes it to fall into a lot of pitfalls. Okay. And I, I just played this this uh, this clip here and I found something which I usually find whenever I play something having to do with Rabbi and his, his ministries. Um, and I want to go ahead and play that really quickly and then talk after. They say... I don't want to be with God. It would be an invasion of my privacy. It would take away my autonomy. That's not attractive to me. Well, if that's not attractive to you, then God is not going to force you to be with him and being apart from him. So what you just heard him say was, <clears throat> if that's not attractive to you, if God is not attractive to you, then he's not going to force you in his presence. Now, right off the bat, that ideology that thinking is going to lead you into wrong theology a theology that's going to trip you up constantly because it's going to constantly butt heads with the scriptures okay so these free willers have this idea that <clears throat> that <clears throat> i like to say that armenians give god 50 percent of the credit and they take the other 50 percent so God the Father sent his son to live a perfectly righteous life for 33 years, to be persecuted, to be hated, to be arrested, to be hung on a cross, okay, abused, disrespected, to die and to be resurrected on the third day, defeating sin and death. That was his part. Now, it's your part, okay, to go, hmm, you know, this broad way isn't the right way. I see that narrow road over there. I think I'm going to choose that narrow road. I think I'm going to choose Christ, okay? So, therefore... On the day of judgment, when we're all in heaven, I can boast because I chose God. He did the 50% in dying on the cross and defeating sin and death. I did the other 50% by choosing him. Okay? Do you see the error in that? There's a reason why Ephesians 2.9 says there would be no boasting. Why will there be no boasting in heaven? Because it's all a work of God. Every every bit of it, from the creation to the to the sin to the salvation to the plan of salvation is all of God and none of you okay there is no boasting in heaven because you did not see you couldn't see okay something had to happen to you before you could see this is why God deserves all glory okay? and you deserve none okay Romans 3 10 there is none righteous no not one there is none deserving okay you're not deserving Romans 3.11, no one seeks after God. No one even understands them. Okay, so if no one seeks after God, if we're all walking on the broad way in our carnal uh, uh, lost state, we don't even, we don't, we can't even fathom or understand that the way we're walking is wrong. Outside of the sovereign will of God and the purposes of his regeneration. We don't know. That's why it is so important to understand the doctrine of man in light of God's sovereignty. Because, it, see, this is why people fall into this trap of free will. That man has to choose God or man has the ability in himself to choose God. That everything, everything, every bit of free will goes against the scriptures. Okay? Because not only does man not have the ability, man is dead. The scriptures describe mankind as being dead in their sins and trespasses. Dead men can't respond to a call. Something has to first happen. Okay. And one of the interesting things to remember whenever you hear, hear that kind of preaching is to remember what you were before God saved you. Okay. There are a lot of different paths. <clears throat> I'm trying to explain this the right way. There's a reason why the top guys in the reform camp, okay, 
are there. there there's a reason why we have the R.C. Sproles, <clears throat> the uh, John MacArthur's, the Tim Conway's, the Vody Bauckham's, the Paul Washer's. <clears throat> they all believe the same thing. Okay. Now there are little differences here and there, but for the most part, they all believe the same thing. Now, why is that? Is that a coincidence? Uh, is it a coincidence that they're all Calvinists? No, it's because they believe the Bible. And the reason they believe the Bible is because they were led in truth by the Holy Spirit. Okay. <clears throat> the thing that causes us to believe truth is the Holy Spirit. One third of the Godhead. We actually have, if you are truly born again, regenerate, you have God dwelling inside of you. No, that does not make you God, but you have him dwelling inside of you. And that's why if you're a true believer, it hurts you when you sin. Okay, it causes you to feel, okay, <clears throat> a desire to repent after you've sinned. That's not you. That's God dwelling inside of you. Okay, so there's a reason why there, there see, there's a, a big ball of Christianity. And in that ball consists of a lot of different sects and, 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 and sections that are different than one another. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm suffering from allergies. So if I sound this way, just just know it's because of my allergies. Um, but. Rabbi and his ministries, they're one part of that. OK, and it's not a true part. And you and you can tell that by what they teach and what they believe. And this is one of the faults that reveals what they believe. They're free willers. OK. Now, I'm not going to say that rabbis lost. Um, I'm not going to say this man's lost, but there is a reason why they believe different than those who are of reformed Calvinistic. It could be because they're lost. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and say that the Holy Spirit would allow someone to believe something so contradictory, contradictory to scripture. There's something wrong with that. For someone to believe that man has the ability within himself to save himself. Or to come to God and therefore be saved. There's a problem there. There's, there's a huge error there. That's not scriptural. Okay? The Bible go, John, Jesus says in John 6, 44, no one comes to Christ unless the Father draws him. Okay? So we see in scripture that there's this drawing, that there's this selecting, that there's this taking and, and, and changing and giving a new heart. Therefore, giving a new desires. Okay? Think about this. Whenever you hear someone say something like that, think about what you were when you were lost. If you are a true believer today, think about what you were when you were lost. Me personally, I wasn't thinking about God. OK, I had sin on my mind. Uh, there, there was no thought of coming to God. Uh, I, I was wicked. I was absolutely wicked. OK, <clears throat> and if God had left it up to me, I'd either be right now, I'd either be dead or in, in prison right now. I would have never came to Christ. Never. Okay. So the point is you can't choose God. Okay. You can't save yourself. If you are a true Christian, it's not because you within yourself said, you know what? This Christianity thing is the right way. No, it's because God elected you to faith before the foundations of the world. Okay. That's why you are saved. Not because you made the decision to come to God. Not because you saw that God was the best choice. You were on the Broadway, just like everyone else who's lost in this world. With no desire to turn and to look to the narrow path. So I hope I've made my point clear. Um, I hope you guys have a blessed day. Thank you for listening.